four of the Winter and Christmas STEM challenges. This week we are talking about Snowman Stretch, where students build the tallest snowman possible. This is a really straightforward challenge, very simple criteria and constraints unless you choose to adjust them, and you can do it with very little materials. Just really a few sheets of copy paper and some tape is all you need. Um, everything else is kind of gravy on this one. Now you'll notice with the copy paper snowman, I had to put the tier with his head down here so you could see him. Later I will put a photo in so you can see the entire thing. He's out of frame when I put him up there. Let's take a minute to look at the materials and the STEM challenge cycle. Remember the STEM challenge cycle, I just had a new video made on that, so make sure that you click and check it out if you didn't last week. This is the STEM challenge cycle you should follow for every challenge. I've defined each step in another video. I've added a pop-in card to that video here, as well as a link in the description. You saw in the materials picture that there was tissue paper, copy paper, and cotton balls. Now you don't need to use all of those. In fact, you could do the challenge a few different times in a few different ways, using different materials as the primary source. Criteria is pretty simple on this one. I have the students have no more than three levels to their snowman and they can have an optional hat. The hat does not count as a tier, and when they are measuring the height of the snowman, I let them measure to the top of the hat. And the major constraint on this one to start is that the snowman must be freestanding. He can't lean against anything, and the kids can't balance him up. Now, if you're looking to make it a little bit trickier, there are a lot of different things that you can modify on this. One thing you can do is have the students, rather than measure the tallest snowman, have them measure for the greatest volume. Another thing you can do is just choose a percentage at them, 75%, let's say, and tell the students that each successive tier must be 75% or less of the previous tier. You can also require that the students make each new tier a different geometric solid, and you can have them mix and match the primary material used within each tier. So if I use tissue paper on the bottom tier, I can't use it on the next one. I would have to use either the copy paper or the cotton balls, or if there's something else you provide, use that. Measurement's pretty easy on this one. Obviously, we are measuring uh, for height. We're gonna measure two from the bottom to the top of the half. If you've chosen to have students build their snowman for maximum volume, then they're probably going to need to use some estimates because they're probably not building in perfect geometric solids. Um, my bottom uh, tier here is spherical, sort of. I will have to take some estimates. My second tier is cylindrical, and my top tier, although you probably can't quite tell, it's uh, closest to a triangular prism. The students will have to calculate the volume of each tier and then add everything together, and they should have a buddy team assigned to them so they can check each other's calculations. The first extension activity that comes to mind here is anything to do with states of matter, but particularly changes in state. Um, obviously, Frosty the Snowman's big problem was that he was melting. So you can have students design an experiment in which they're trying to figure out ways to either speed up the melting process or slow down the melting process, and I would use ice cubes in that case. If you choose to do that, of course, in an experiment where you're waiting for something to melt, there will be lulls where the students need to take observations, but maybe only every five or ten minutes. If you're looking for something to do in those lulls, I would recommend Reindeer Relay. It's a good time to run that race. Um, or any of the other challenges, if you're going to be um, doing a second iteration, you can have students working on their second iteration and also following up on the uh, melting experiment during that time. Just a quick note, you might already have my Keep It Cool, Make It Melt challenge that's part of the summer bundle. This actually might be a really interesting thing to do, to do your first iteration of that challenge in the winter and the second in the summer. Just a thought, I haven't tried it yet. So that's all the basics there for you, but of course I always have more for you. Check out the resource. Do you want to build a snowman? This resource contains everything you need, including modifications for use with second through eighth graders. You'll still need to gather the simple materials, of course, but the hard parts are done. You'll get aligned next-gen science standards, links to my STEM challenge how-to videos to help you get the most from each challenge, and the snowman stretch materials list. In teacher tips, you'll find premise and setup, how to increase or decrease difficulty through the criteria and constraints list, measuring results, and cross-curricular extension suggestions. You'll find an editable criteria and constraints list so you can tailor the challenge to your students. For student handouts, there are two versions, four-page expanded room for response for younger students and a two-page condensed space paper saver version. You'll also find a set of group discussion questions. In the extension templates, you'll find a set of handouts for students to design their own experiment to speed up the melting of ice with sample answer key. 
You'll also find math extension and process flow templates. This resource is available individually and as part of the discounted Winter Christmas and Mega STEM Challenge bundles. Links can be found in the description below the video. Be sure you don't forget to like and subscribe. I will be back next time with Frozen Fortress, which is our fifth and final Christmas Winter STEM Challenge. See you next time.